It's Saturday morning and it's time for us to pray and it's time for us to seek the Lord and seek his word and to get transformed by his grace. And so thank you for uh, listening and watching here this morning. Let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of your word, the gift of your grace, and the gift of the blood of your son, Jesus, who paid the price for all of our sins that we don't have to worry about having to pay for anything. All we have to do is trust you and to give you our hearts. And Lord Jesus, every person watching, Lord, has given their heart to you. Lord God, I declare by faith, Lord, because uh, you're so worthy of receiving it, who else would give their life for me? Who else would give their lives for the whole world? And so, Jesus, we ask you in, to in, be here during this time, and we ask you to help us, Lord, to grasp and understand and get ready for what's coming. Thank you, Lord, for warning us about what's to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey guys, this week I've been talking about uh, preparing for what's coming. This is part four in that series. Uh, we've been looking primarily at Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. Um, and these are uh, parables and teachings that Jesus gave regarding uh, the kingdom of heaven and what it would be like at the end of the age. And so today, you know, today we're going to look at Matthew 25. I'm going to look this up. There is the uh, story of the ten virgins. So let's look there. That's uh, Matthew 25. I'm going to pull it up on my scriptures right now. Here we go. Matthew 25. And see, there's verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took out took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, rather go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. Boom. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Uh, you know, that is uh, some horrifying words right there. They're all virgins. They're all people that are already um, purposed that they are going to meet the bridegroom, that they are going to get married. Now, you know, the fact that there's 10 and there's only one bridegroom, I don't get that. But I guess that was a little bit more common back in that day. But, you know, here's the point. Uh, the point is that we've got, uh, we've got people that are preparing for something. They've made themselves virgins. They're already pure in that sense. And yet here comes Jesus and they ain't ready. Is it, you know, does that sound like anybody you know? I hope not. Uh, but that is, hold on just a second here. I'm going to get this fixed up. There we go. All right. So what what I see here is we got people who are uh, preparing to meet the Lord, preparing to see Jesus. And yet uh, when the push comes to shove, when the time comes, they're not ready. Um, and they have to go out and do something else. They have to go make up for what they didn't do to get ready. And then when they finally go out and they, you know, they meet uh, the Lord, he says, uh, hey, man, don't know you. You're out of here. And, and then Jesus tells us very plainly what the purpose of the uh, parable is, is watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So there's a sleepiness involved here. There's a lack of preparation for that sleepiness that provide that 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 instigates us to uh, think about well what am I doing to make sure that I'm ready for when Jesus comes what do I have to do what is this oil in my lamp and this is a uh, you know a su subject of some controversy but the end of the parable is not a controversy is that you know what 
Watch, therefore, because you don't know the day or the hour. You don't know when I'm coming back. You don't know. And so if you get sleepy, if you aren't ready, if you have not prepared oil for your lamp. Now, I'll give you my hint on what I think oil for your lamp is. I think what we're talking about is have we invested enough in our relationship with the Holy Spirit? Have we continually obeyed the command to be filled with the Spirit on a daily basis? Uh, many of us are just coasting through the Christian life. We're just thinking that, you know, I can uh, live any way I want and Jesus ain't coming for a while. And then when he comes, then I'll be get ready. It says, that's nonsense. Th these parables, including this one here, disprove the idea that you can live any way you want or take a break from following the Lord and then get ready for when he comes back. Because, you know, when the time comes, you're not going to be ready. You're not going to have the oil in your lamp. And <clears throat> this has to be important to us because it's important to Jesus. He gives us so many different um, parables here in teaching, warning us about getting ready. And yet I'm afraid that many of us hide behind uh, doctrines which don't line up with these parables. We hide behind the doctrines and we say, well, you know, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. And therefore, you know, I've got my ticket punched and now I can go take a nap. But if there's anything that's clear out of these parables, it's that that can't be true. It cannot be true that your destination is assured if you get slovenly, you get lazy, and you don't watch and you don't pay attention. Where is the alertness in our spiritual condition? Where are our eyes and our discernment over the choices that we're making and the things that we're letting ourselves get into? I tell you what, if you are not actively intentional with your Christian walk, Satan has got a hook in you and he's dragging you down. I mean, you put on TV right now, what are you watching? I tell you what, there's very little on any kind of TV show that's going to be edifying to your faith. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, even the news, oh my gosh, I don't care what channel you're watching. It's, it's designed to put a hook into your soul and to drag you into doing what you're not supposed to do according to the early part of Matthew 24. And that is don't be alarmed. When you see wars and rumors of wars and all these things happen, famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places, uh, don't be alarmed because, you know, the end has not come. These are just the beginning of the birth pains. If you get too alarmed too early, that adrenaline rush that never goes away is going to wear you down. It's going to wear down your emotions. It's going to cause you to react negatively when people come to you uh, with different situations. When life is hard enough as it is, we don't need to carry on our shoulders the weight of whatever political thing is going on right now. Even this coronavirus thing that we've been suffering through. Now, it's been real. and We've needed to stay informed because many people that we know are, are getting sick and many, many more are being economically disadvantaged. But this idea of trying to carry this on our shoulders the whole time, that, that's a war against your soul. And that's going to wear you out. I'm telling you, you, there's something that needs to happen here that we need to be alert and attentive to the things that are most important. And the things that are most important are our walk with Jesus. He loves us and he wants us to pay attention to him. And he wants us to get filled up in our lamps and to, so that, you know, uh, we may all be asleep. And not paying too much attention when the time comes. But what you've put into your lamp beforehand is what's going to count. And if what you've put in is uh, nonstop attention to sports, which has now been taken away from us mostly, or nonstop attention to um, you know your favorite uh, Netflix show, or, or you're a news addict and you just can't get away from watching uh, riots and getting in, you know getting all worked up and emotional over. Uh, different things that happen in the news that uh, really have nothing to, much to do with you. They don't impact your life. They don't change the amount of your paycheck. They don't change how much your wife or your kids love you. Um, it doesn't stop. And more than anything, these things many times are just distractions from us completing the calls that God has put on our lives. So we really need to be alert. We need to be attentive. Um, let's go on and let's take a look at the next parable here, the parable of the talents. I, you know, I, this is one of my favorite parables to teach on when I'm overseas because uh, there's a direct responsibility here for the believer to do something. So I'm just, I don't have time to read the whole thing, but in verse 14 of Matthew 25, 
you know, for it will be like a man going on a journey. Well, what will be like? Well, you know, when, when it's the end and it's getting near the time for Jesus to come back. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one, each according to his ability. So that phrase there makes it real clear that we can't say, well, God, I just couldn't do it because I didn't know how. He will give us talents. He will give us uh, gifts. He will give us callings that are conformed to what our ability is. That he, the, the grace that he put within us, he will know uh, how much is too much. His grace is sufficient for us. And then he went away. Well, you know, that sounds like us, right? You know, he gave gifts and talents and he delegated the whole future of the kingdom of God on this planet to 12 apostles at that time, 11, right? And look what they did with it. Oh my gosh. You talk about a return on your investment. You take 11 ordinary guys who had just watched their master get publicly ridiculed and murdered and they were cowering in fear, but then the Holy Spirit came on them and they went out and they just took over the world. And now look what we have today, millions and millions, even billions of people alive today who claim the name of Jesus as their God. I mean, that's just awesome. So what can we do in comparison to that? Well, you know, we don't compare ourselves to them, but that's supposed to be an inspiration for us. So he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he, and, and now look, if go ahead and verse... Um, 19. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Our day of settling accounts with the Lord is coming. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents here. I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, Well believed. Oh, he didn't say that. He said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. You know, I want to prepare for that day. You want to prepare for that day. And that's going to require faithful diligence with whatever giftings and talents the Lord has put into your hands to manage. It's, it's a very simple concept. The Lord is looking for a return on his investment in us. He made an investment in you. He made an investment in me. And what's he going to get back for that one day? Oh, well, Tony, you're making it sound like we're getting saved by... Uh, works or something. He says, well, you know, just by you saying that is avoiding the issue. You know, the scripture is right here in front of you, if that's what you're thinking. I mean, come on, we got to wrestle with this. This is really plain. My understanding of it is that I am saved by grace. It's not by work so that no man could boast. But if I really have the spirit of God living within me, then the spirit of God is going to prompt me to do things which are going to uh, create fruit for the kingdom of God. So I'm saved by, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saved by works, but my works prove that I am saved. And I think that's going to be the case for just about all of us. And so I just want to encourage you today that Jesus is going to reward you based upon the return on the investment he put on you. He did not put his seed in you in order for you to just sit there and enjoy it and play with it and do like this with it. Go, man, what a good boy am I? No. You have to take that and you have to seize the day and you got to go out and do something. Now, I don't know what your gifting is. You know, part of mine is right here on this, uh, which you're watching right now. I got a big mouth. And so you're getting to enjoy me um, use my gift today. And maybe somebody's getting touched out there today. And then, you know, maybe that'll end up being a crown or a jewel in my crown one day. I don't know. But I'm working in obedience to what he's called me to do. And I am not waiting for him to show me every opportunity. You know, I'm listening to the nudge of the Spirit. And when the Spirit says, do it, I do it. So let's pray right now because our time is running short. And we're going to pray that God just gives you a supernatural bolt of energy and wisdom so that you will clearly put into practice what he's given you to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching me now. I thank you, God, that you have filled them with a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. That joy is working in their heart to just manifest out of them, Lord, so that it'll result in good fruit for your kingdom. Now, Jesus, I ask you that you would bless my friends, that you would encourage them to see what it is that they can do, Lord, to bring you glory, to bear fruit for you, and Lord, and that you would give them the strength and the courage to get it done. I thank you, Jesus, that there's nothing too hard for us in you. 
We can do all things in Christ, through Christ, who strengthens us. Father, heal my friends who are sick. Lord, bless their economies in this difficult season, Lord, of coronavirus. And I pray, Lord God, that you would bless them in everything they set their hands to.